Hey guys, Ronnie from ATG and AT Podcast back here talking more Halloween ends theories. And today I want to talk about the Myers house. I have three weird theories or rumors that are out there about Michael Myers childhood home. Now everybody that watched Halloween Kills knows that the key to finding Myers is you go to his childhood home and you wait upstairs in front of the window and he will appear to either attack you or kill you. So really quickly, three wild theories, rumors, whatever you want to call them about the Myers house for Halloween ends. One wild rumor that was going around early on was that Lori bulldozes the Myers house, thus destroying the one place Michael Myers wants to get to, preventing him from getting upstairs and looking out that window. Probably a way of trying to get semi-even with Myers after he killed her daughter. Now, this was originally put on social media by one of the producers or someone that was involved with Halloween Kills. So I don't know how much truth there is to this. If Halloween ends starts and there's a flashback of Lori taking a bulldozer or burning that house down, wouldn't surprise me and I wouldn't hate it. It seems like something that the Lori Strode in this new trilogy would do. But it seems a little too easy. The next rumor I actually like a lot. And it's the idea that after the events of Halloween Kills, Michael Myers disappears. Lori buys the Myers house and starts to live there so she can be there when he finally comes home. I love this idea. I literally think this idea is money. I mean, if we're going to continue on, with the same crazy Lori doing whatever it takes to try to stop Michael. The idea of her buying the Myers house and living there and possibly setting up booby traps like she had in her house for when he eventually does return, especially to that top bedroom, is a wild idea to me. It's, it's a great idea, and I'd love to see it happen. And maybe she's waiting there and she's waiting and four years goes by and he hasn't returned to this house yet and she finally just gives up and says hey it's not gonna happen and boom out of nowhere he shows up now the last one is the wildest of the theories and it's my fault because this is my theory a lot of people have been wondering about michael myers is he supernatural in this trilogy because Danny McBride, David Gordon Green went out of their way to say that Michael Myers is a supernatural being. There was nothing scary about that. They're taking it back to where he's a mortal man hiding in the bushes, ready to jump out, prey, stalk, kill. He can be killed, and the thing that's more frightening about that is he's a human with no motive doing that. Now, they did a great job in Halloween 2018 establishing the fact that Myers is the boogeyman going house to house random, almost like a shark feeding on people on Halloween. But then he gets hit by a car and he wakes up and then he gets burned up in a house and he survives. And then he gets shot and beaten by multiple people, a mob and Halloween kills and survives. So are we easing back to that supernatural element where Michael Myers is not human. I found a, a way that we can fix all of this and have Danny McBride and David Gordon Green be correct and have the fans be correct. My last theory for this video, what if the Myers house is haunted? Now stick with me before you click off. What if Michael Myers is possessed by a demon that was haunting the Myers house that possessed his body in 1963, causing him to be evil, causing him to kill his sister Judith, causing him to not speak. And then the demon goes dormant, still possessing his body, which is why Loomis said he sat there just staring at a wall. It makes sense. And then the demon activates, causing him to break out of Smith's Grove, going back to Haddonfield, going back to the Myers house, where he was inside the Myers house when Lori dropped the keys off and then started following Lori around and we know how Halloween went. It would also explain how he's able to survive a knitting needle to the neck, how he's able to survive a stab wound to the chest. It would also explain the creepy sitting up in the background 
as Laurie is slumped in the doorway. It would also explain why he gets shot six times, falls off a balcony, and is immediately gone. Is Myers possessed by a demon that was haunting the Myers house? Now stay with me. Don't click off yet. Trust me, it gets better. So it goes dormant again, and he's in Smith's Grove again for 40 years this time. And the demon stays dormant until Aaron shows up with the mask, awakening the demon. And then Sartain pulls his stuff where he helps Michael escape, and the demon heads back to Haddonfield to kill as many people as he can while going to the Myers house. Guys, it's everything we want right there. That's a wild idea. And it's also an idea that Jamie Lee Curtis saying this movie is going to make a lot of people mad. Would you be mad if you find out, hey, he's possessed. There's a demon in him. A lot of Halloween purists want him to be just the boogeyman. But what if he's possessed by a demon that was haunting the Myers house, and that's where his supernatural elements come from? Crazy idea. Kill me in the comments if you don't like it. I told you this was going to be three crazy Myers house theories. If you like this video, if you enjoyed this content, Give us a like, comment in the section down below, and let me know everything you agree or disagree with. If you want to check out our podcast, we're available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, anywhere you can find podcasts, the ATGNAT podcast is there. I recommend checking it out. It's a really good show. We need people to listen. We love fans. Thanks for listening, guys. We love you.